everybody. Welcome to the Hallmark Keys podcast. We are so excited today. We have a very big hall star with us and we have been hoping to be able to get Ryan Pavey here on the podcast for some time. So it's so exciting. Thank you so much for coming and taking a second to talk with us. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so you have new movie coming out this weekend, a, yes. a little daytime drama, and we're really looking forward to that. But before, I just wanted to ask you one question uh, mm -hmm. of what inspired you to get into acting? How did you start uh, your career? Um, you know, I, I get this question a lot, and I always wish I had like a cooler, more like poetic uh, response to it. Um, honestly, I had some friends who were doing it. I had some friends who were models. It, it began with modeling. Um, and I was doing a bunch of grunt jobs at the time. I was a handyman. Um, and, uh, and I was a bartender. I worked in restaurants for forever. Um, and I had a bunch of friends who were, who were models and they were always traveling and they were going to all these beautiful locations and, you know, they were making a little bit of money. And it sounded great. You know, I, I worked all the time between two jobs. I never had days off seven days a week all the time. And I was gross. And, and their people were like, you should give this a try. And I was like, yeah, right, man. I can't do that. Um, but we gave it a shot eventually. I was a pretty terrible model, but it did give way to um, commercial acting, which was my first, uh, you know, my, my segue, my first segue into on screen motion, basically moving around, talking, doing stuff. And that was a much better fit than modeling. And I did that for a very long time, not really thinking that this was going to turn into a career, just, you know, supplemental income and it was fun and there's travel and there's a little bit of adventure and you get to kind of be goofy and it was cool. But again, not really thinking of it as a career. And the head of my commercial division at the time, um, her, her name was, was Janine, called me into her office for a little chat one time. And she was just kind of like, what are you doing with all this? It's like, I don't know, man, you guys send me an email, I go, you don't send me an email, I don't go. Um, and she's like, well, I know these guys, and they're close, and I think they're looking for somebody like you, if you'd ever thought about film and TV, and they, they're managers. And so she called them, and I walked there two blocks away, knocked on the door, and they gave me some pages, and I memorized them super fast, because that's a, that's a thing that I could do. And I came in, and, I, and they were like, You're, are you good? I was like, I don't know if I'm any good, but I know them. <laughs> um, and we've been, they've been my managers ever since for almost a decade now. And like, I don't know, managers was like kind of a stuffy thing. We've still never signed anything. They're just like my buddies. And shortly thereafter uh, came General Hospital and the rest is history. So I kind, of, I kind of fell into it, you know? That's nice. Yeah, that's great. When you first had your first uh, speaking role uh, mm. in, a, in a show or anything, were you just so nervous? Uh, my first speaking role on a television show uh, was General Hospital, was oh Detective gosh, Nathan wow. West in General Hospital. And I was, uh, I was a little bit nervous. I'm kind of weird. I don't get super nervous. I mean, I recognize that there were emotional stakes. The big thing for me, I had massive food poisoning on my first day oh, at no. GH. I was super sick. And I just remember getting to the end of that day. I had like 36 pages of dialogue, no shirt and food poisoning. And I remember getting to the end of that day and just being like, if I can make it through today, I can make it through anything. And I did. And I, I mean, I, I probably wasn't knocking anybody's socks off with my acting chops. Anybody who's familiar with soap Twitter can probably pull up some examples of how unkind people were. Um, but, you know, I did the best I could to kind of try and learn. Um, it was intense. It was intense. Yeah. But I like that, though. I, I, I like pressure. It, it, it snaps me out of autopilot, you know, it, it wakes me up. I, I liked it. So I still do. Mm -hmm. They film like multiple episodes every single day, right? Doing that. Yeah, episodes. they film it kind of in chunks. Um, I've yeah. only been on the one, so I can really only comment on the way things were done on General Hospital. But we shot about eight episodes a week to build up a little bit of a surplus because we get little breaks here and there. We're like on for a little while and then we're off for a little while. So they shoot more than they can air. It's a five day a week episodic so that they have extra stuff left over. But they're they're working, man. We crank yeah. out at least 100, oh, yeah. 150 pages a day, at least. Probably on GH, somewhere between 140 and 190 is probably what the gross page count for everybody is for a single day of shooting. And that can be anywhere between one and three episodes, uh, uh, portions of one and three episodes. Wow. 
That's amazing. It's a lot. It's a lot. Well, you started out in Hallmark playing Mr. Darcy uh, in that series. Mm-hmm. And that's such a, an iconic role playing Darcy. You know, it was that. Uh, oh, yeah. What was that like to to play to play that role? There were there were nerves there a little bit for sure because it was my first ever lead in a in a film. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's, and it's Donovan Darcy, man. You see some of the people who have portrayed this character. Now we didn't go right. heavy into the Pride and Prejudice universe, but Darcy is from the Pride and Prejudice universe. Yeah. And so I got to yeah. say, I mean, for my money, it's probably Colin Firth every yeah. time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it definitely felt like big shoes to fill. But it was a fun film. I mean, I look back on it very fondly. And obviously, I mean, it, it started everything. He was my first. We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. So a little daytime drama. Uh, since you have a soap mm-hmm. opera background, it must have been fun. You'd said in one of the clips that it was very meta for you. Uh, what was that like yeah. for you? It was a trip, you know. I mean, very meta, very art imitating life. Jen and I both come from soap opera land. And Linda Dano, obviously, like. Huge. So, yeah. Um, it was a trip to have a lot of people that were kind of like soap ambassadors. And we really kind of got pulled in almost as consultants um, for the way scripts are structured, what the page count is per day, the way things are done on a set, what the sets maybe look like. It was kind of cool. So we really did. And I, I've talked about it a couple of times now. It really does kind of give you a glimpse into what it's like to be a soap actor. You know, I mean, obviously inside of a film, but there's little snippets here and there that really are like, this is what it's like. This is what it's like to shoot a soap. You know, this is what it's like when you could just script. This is what the scripts look like. This is how we talk to each other. It was kind of a trip. Um, yeah. It brought back a lot of, of fond memories for me. There was a lot of nostalgia there. All the meta, you know, stuff aside. You know, it was a nice walk down memory lane with some great people. Jen and I very nearly worked together on General Hospital. We were both on GH for a little while, but we missed each other by like a month or something crazy like that. So this kind of felt a lot like, you know, we were ships in the night before, but then the ships went backwards mm-hmm. and we got to, we got to finally got to work together. So it worked out good. Yeah. It seems like just from the promos that there's like a little bit of cheekiness, a little bit of humor that maybe is not always in these Hallmark movies. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. There is definitely, cheeky is a good word for it. I liked the humor in this one. It was a little punchy. It was fun. It was good, good back and forth banter. I liked it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Jen said it's her favorite Hallmark movie she's ever been in. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's well, what she said in the, the promos. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's, it, it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, it seems like you two will have nice chemistry. I mean, you'd worked mm-hmm. together before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We right. did a film a few years back called Harvest Love. And that was mm-hmm. a blast, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think... It, if I'm not mistaken, I think this has the same writers as a uh, Harvest Love. Pretty sure um, the uh, the Bergs mm-hmm. sisters are writing. Yeah. So, and they've done a lot of really fun stuff. So I I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it, and it'll be fun whenever they can get that sort of movie within a movie. Like it's yeah. I just I feel like this is sort of Hallmark's version of Soap Dish, just like a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I think that will be fun. Uh, and just a little bit different plot than we've ever seen before. You know, it's not like save, save the farm, save the, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Something like different. Yeah, yeah. Like save Christmas with this big festival. Right. You know, uh, <laughs> and, and hey, don't get 
get me wrong, man. Big festivals need a Christmas or two in Hallmark yeah. Universe. So I'm not trying to talk down on those festivals. It's a good thing we got them or we would have lost yeah. a lot of Christmases. But this one is a bit different. Now, you guys shot this this just this summer, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I went straight out of one and almost immediately into another. I'm there right now. <laughs> yeah. And how has that all been as far as shooting these films in COVID and everything? Uh, is have you, is that all been pretty streamlined? Yeah, yeah. I have to say, I, mean, I have to commend uh, Hallmark for their ability to adapt, shall we say. Um, I can tell you from personal experience, working in, in film and TV, there isn't a lot of extra time. Our schedules are almost always tight. You know, there, nobody finishes early. It's one of those things, place, to have all kinds of new rules and regulations basically slow for a network uh stories for us to watch is pretty impressive um mm -hmm. and it's it really has it's really been kind of kind of interesting and, and almost uh, borderline miraculous to see how such a big machine can pivot with so little notice and yeah. still manage to make it all work some kind of way it keeps everybody safe nobody's sick we're all protected to the to the best of our ability you know i'm not, I'm not walking around in a hazmat suit um mm -hmm. but but I mean it. I mean, the sets feel safe. We're still working. We're still making movies. We're still telling stories. It's been cool. Even on, the, even on this one, I'm on a Hallmark right now. You know, mm -hmm. we've got rules and regulations in place to make sure that everybody's uh, taken care of. We get tested frequently. It's been cool. It's been great to, great to be able to continue to tell stories despite everything shutting down. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, well, I, I think that you're shooting your Christmas movie now, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So are you, allowed, are you allowed to tell us anything about the upcoming Christmas movie? I think Coyote Creek Christmas? Nope. No? Okay. <laughs> Can't comment. Can't. All right. Can't. Understandable. Uh, well, it thank you. contain the word Christmas, about Christmas, and we're going to do that that there's a kiddo in this one and he's awesome. And we shot some stuff today that was super adorable. And the Grinch's oh. heart grew five sizes that day. Yes. So oh. it was super cool. It was super cool. <laughs> That's great. Well, we're so excited. We're excited about the Christmas movie, excited about uh, the a little daytime drama. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. We really appreciate it. And all the Pavy Pack will be I very so excited. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm working for you, man. I'm trying. At least I'm trying. I'm trying. I'll I'll yeah. I'll make as many as I can. I get. I'll... Well, thank you very much for that. We sure appreciate it. <laughs> and do you have social media or anything like that you want to share? Uh, yeah, I definitely have social media. Baby Pack will probably tell you all about that. But it's uh, you know, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Both is just my name, Ryan Pavy. Okay, great. Gotta be careful yeah. of the fakers out there. This is a thing that I actually yeah. do kind of while we've got the opportunity. And and forgive me for being so bold as to speak for you know my my fellow Hallmark actors and stuff, but there are a lot of fake accounts out there. You guys be careful. Look for the blue check. Usually your your fave stars probably have a lot of uh, a lot of followers and stuff like that, and none of them are ever going to reach into your DMs or anything like that and, and ask you for money or anything like that. So obviously we want to interact with you guys on social media. It's the best place to keep up with kind of the latest and greatest of what we're doing and current events and where we're going and things like that. But you know you got to be careful out there. So mine is just my name. It's the one with the blue check. Got a whole bunch of followers next to it. That's the only one. Great. We'll have all that information in the description. People can make sure to follow you. And cool, thanks cool. again. We, we so appreciate you taking time to talk with us. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching our stories, man. We work really hard on them. We really do. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Okay. Have a good one. I'd like to thank Ryan for coming on the podcast and talking with us. It was so much fun. I know he's super busy right now. So we really appreciate him taking a few minutes to talk with us and make sure you're following him on all his socials. Make sure you're following the podcast at Hallmark's Pod and Hallmark's Podcast, all of our social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our merch store and our patron group and that is so important to us please take a look and if you can support us in any way it means so much to us you can find me at rachel's reviews all of our social media itunes youtube and on rotten tomatoes 
please check that out. I would really appreciate it. Thanks again to Ryan and we'll talk to y'all later. Bye.